It's a nice day today, isn't it, Jan? It is rather, yeah. So we yeah. thought we'd come out and get some, get some shopping. You notice the moment I start my vlog, Jen starts going into host mode. She, uh, I can't help it, you pointed at the camera at me. I didn't, I pointed the camera at me and you were next to me. That's how it works. So I, I, I'm, a, I'm an abject professional. You're an abject something. Yes, you are. <laughs> this is what we're like all day, every day. Yeah, my basically. goodness, the weather is pretty good. Right, so we're out and about because uh, we want to get out of the house, basically. It's one of those things when you've been on lockdown for a while. It's what you do, isn't it? My yeah. goodness, I've constantly got this light, right? If I walk backward, we're not in the sun then. Yeah, you'll just trip up. <laughs> so we're out, uh, out and about having a look for things that we need. Do <laughs> you remember, Zoe? This is where we nearly lost the then Defence Secretary. Oh my goodness, yeah, Gavin Williamson. We were, uh, we were doing a... Uh, was she was doing knock and run. Yeah, in the middle of the uh, campaign, election campaign. Yeah. And if, most people walked off, but Jen was with them trying to keep, uh, well, keep I was, from getting I lost. I was the uh, camera woman. Um, so I was, I was obviously, uh, I didn't do knock and run, I just filmed it. Um, but everybody else wandered off. And yeah. I was suddenly aware that I was loitering at the back, and, getting some good and pictures. And no one had noticed. So I stuck with Gavin Williamson, because I thought, it would have been uh, a bit embarrassing if I lost him. Um, yeah, we, uh, I, I, it was I might an odd have had day. Some explaining to do. It was a very odd day. Let's put it that way. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we're going to have a wander around the range and uh, pick up a few bits and pieces for the shows. So that should be interesting. Let's head off. I hope you enjoyed that little piece in the vlog yesterday about the console. I'm going to be writing an article for Game Hammer about that series of consoles because the 50 uh, X family is. A variety of different machines. There's uh, all kinds that can use these uh, cartridges. Some of them aren't compatible with one another because the cartridge shape changes a little bit, but um, I suppose if you made a makeshift adapter it would probably fit and it'll probably work. So there is a possibility of that anyway. Apparently uh, not all of the cartridges are available for all systems. It's a bit weird. There's only eight of them. Some people say seven. We'll see what happens. Anyway, that's not what I want to talk to you about today. It's just a little addendum to yesterday. What I want to talk about really is I've been thinking over the last few days about what is on this channel and how I uh, use it going forward. It's a very uh, corporate term, isn't it? But the general uh, gist I've had is uh, we had the Monday Book Club, we had Reading the Weird, which I stopped years ago and uh, never actually finished the final uh, story. I might finish that someday, but I just haven't had time. Uh, there's the News Review podcast and things like that. And what I've decided is I'm going to fold all of the various things except for Reading the Weird. I'll keep that as a separate thing because it's like an audiobook thing. The rest of them I'm going to fold into this uh, vlog. So today, I don't have a little intro, I will make a, a nice little intro for it eventually, but today I don't have it. Today I want to wrap the news review into the vlog because uh, this thing with Darren Grimes needs to be addressed. Let's go to it. Okay, hello and welcome to another episode of the news review, the my short podcast which is now being included into my vlogs because it allows me to do these more often rather than having to wait. That's the idea anyway. So I want to talk to you about something that's uh, very, very concerning, let's put it that way, because it's about the situation with Darren Grimes. Now I've got a lot of notes here, so I'm going to try and summarise what's going on. Basically, on the 2nd of July, Darren Grimes on his uh, YouTube channel, Reasoned UK, which we will not be copying uh, a clip into here because, let's face it, uh, right now it's a mess what's going on here. But uh, he has this uh, show, Reason UK, where he interviews people. And one of the people he interviewed is uh, a historian called Dr. Richard Starkey. Now, on this show, Dr. Starkey stated that uh, uh, slavery couldn't have been a genocide because, and I'm quoting here, there are so many damn blacks. Not exactly a good comment there, is it? My goodness. I Now, I would have pulled him up on that, I have to say, because uh, my first reaction would have been, what? <laughs> but uh, it's a stupid thing to say. And I'm not even going to comment on whether slavery is a genocide or not, because that is a, a completely different matter. And uh, it's not something we need to get into. But uh, he stated this. Darren didn't pull him up on it. And uh, I think that's going to become quite important because it does appear to be the original reason why the complaint was made. 
is that Darren didn't pull him up on it and included that part in the broadcast. Now, arguments could be made that he should have cut that or bleeped it or some, in some way censored it before it was broadcast onto the YouTube. Uh, I think we can all uh, uh, make our decisions on whether that would have been the right thing to do or not. But his choice was to not censor it and leave that in. Now, there is an argument to be made for doing that because the guy, its he could be hoisted by his own petard, as they say. It, he has stated this thing, that is his opinion, allow people to see that he holds this opinion. That's a, a valid argument as well. But I can also see the valid argument of this is a very, very bad and stupid thing to say, so it should have been cut. So I'll let you draw your own conclusions. It's a complex subject. I think we can all agree that. Personally, I would have called him out on it in the show, left it in, called him out on it, and then had a discussion about whether he really thought that was appropriate. Because I think uh, it wouldn't have been appropriate. And uh, it's, well, and from terms of uh, it wouldn't have been appropriate to say, that way we could have had a conversation and maybe it would have been educated to the not to actually make stupid comments again. But that's not what happened. So Darren put this out. Two days later, on the 4th of July, which is ironic given the, the connotations of the 4th of July, a complaint was made to Durham Police about uh, this broadcast. They investigated and sent it to the Metropolitan Police for further action. The Metropolitan Police then appeared to have decided that there was an offence under the Public Order Act of 1986 and have decided to investigate and uh, question Darren under caution. This came out a few days ago, like, uh, let's see, the 10th of October, I think it was. So it's been a, quite an interesting and in-depth uh, investigation, or at least it's been on the back burner for a few months, and then they've decided to go forward with it. I can't say which because they haven't said which. So which part of the Public Order Act would Darren be uh, investigated under for this? Because that is going to uh, be the question that needs to be answered if this goes any further. So I'm going to now bring up uh, on my screen here, I have got the Public Order Act uh, 1986 here on the screen. So we've got uh, Section 21 of that Act. A person who distributes or shows or plays a recording of visual images or sounds which are threatening, abusive or insulting is guilty of an offence if A. He intends thereby to stir up racial hatred or B. Having regard to all the circumstances, racial hatred is likely to be stirred up thereby. So, I don't think he intended to stir up racial hatred. I really don't. So, the only way I could see... Uh, a prosecution under Section 21 going forward would be under 21 b having regard to all the circumstances, racial hatred is likely to be stirred up thereby. Or they could get him under Section 22. And Section 22 states, uh, if a programme involving threatening, abusive or insulting visual images or sounds is included in a programme service, each of the persons mentioned in Subsection 2 is guilty of an, of an offence if he intends thereby to stir up racial hatred, or having regard to all the circumstances, racial hatred is likely to be stirred up thereby, and persons in this uh, regard are the person providing the programme service, any person by whom the programme is produced or directed, and any person by whom offending words or behaviour are used. So, is he going to be prosecuted under Section 21, which is distributing, showing or playing a recording, because he did distribute it on uh, YouTube, or... Are they going under Section 22, where he's broadcasting, uh, providing the programme service? Well, he's not. YouTube is providing the programme service. They're the, they're the uh, broadcasting medium, aren't they? So were YouTube prosecuted? Were YouTube investigated? I haven't seen any of that evidence of that. But uh, any person by whom the programme is produced or directed, well, that's Darren, so they could get him under that. And any person by whom offending words or behaviour are used. That would be the interesting part because we found out on the 13th of October that uh, Dr. Starkey is also being investigated. So are they going to go for the two of them under Section 22? The main issue I have here is having regard to all the circumstances, racial hatred is likely to be stirred up thereby. Who's regarding it and under whose opinion should we see that as being regarded as likely to stir up racial hatred? That is a prime question here. Is it the reasonable person analysis that we normally get from law? 
a reasonable person would reasonably come to the conclusion that uh, an offence has been committed. That is most likely because if it's not, if it's not the reasonable person and it doesn't say it's a reasonable person, I think it will be because of the rules of statutory interpretation here. I think it will end up being the reasonable person argument, at which point I don't think it's going to go forward. I really don't. I don't. But the Department of Public Prosecutions, they're, they're saying that they should go forward. So what is it? Because if it's not reasonable person, whose point of view is it? And that is the crux of this. Did Dr. Starkey say something that could be seen as stirring up racial hatred? Well, the term damn blacks does sound a bit like he's uh, a bit racist there, doesn't it? Uh, it could be seen as that. There is a possibility. It's a wide ranging law and uh, it could be. So there's a possibility there. But the other side of this is this was an interview from a guy who is, uh, well, he's a young journalist. He does uh, put himself forward as a journalist. And uh, we've got to take him on that. He's attempting to produce basically independent television via Recent UK, the same way that I produce independent television via All Mass Media and all my channels. That that's the way of the world now. The YouTubers are essentially independent television. So he puts himself forward as a journalist. He was doing a journalist-style uh, interview with a historian. The historian said something and didn't get called out on it. Is it likely to be stirring at racial hatred? It's it's so open to interpretation. So we have to come back to the final issue that I want to talk about here because there is potentially a case under this legislation. Let's, let's not beat about the bush. The law is wide-ranging enough and purposefully uh, wide-ranging enough so that people can't wheedle their way out of it, but it can in some circumstances, look like a sledgehammer to crack a nut. Should he have been prosecuted for this? I don't think he should. And a lot of uh, people on both the left and the right also don't think he should because of one major factor. He didn't say it. Someone else did. It was in an interview that was going onto his channel. He has an editorial decision. Does he uh, allow... The statement to stand and uh, let the cards fall where they may for the person who said it or does he call them out and have a debate and a discussion about why he probably shouldn't have said that it's a journalistic and editorial decision and the police do now appear from these actions whether they like it or not to be essentially policing editorial decisions which is a a, a long-winded way of saying they're curtailing freedom of the press we have freedom of the press in this country. We're a Western democracy. Let's not get down that bad route. I really think this needs to go away. I think this uh, situation is ridiculous and this investigation needs to be dropped and the police need to actually state for the record that this should never have happened. That's my views anyway. I want to know your views. Do you think uh, this legislation is right? Do you think that it's too wide-ranging and doesn't uh, go far enough? I'd like to see all views on that. And do you think Darren Grimes should have been prosecuted or even an investigation opened on this case? You know my views now. I'd like to hear yours. So do leave your comments or a video response. Uh, either way, I'd love to hear from you. OK, that's all we got for this time. Let's get back to the vlog. Here we see the lesser spotted Jenny Kirk in her unnatural environment foraging for knickknacks. <laughs> she has been <laughs> successful. This show not sponsored by Rails of Sheffield, but I am reusing one of their bags. If you like today's video, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Doing that really does help to keep the channel going. And an extra special huge thanks has to go out to Chief89, Tepic, and Sam Yates. Thank you very much.